Deadpool 1 for Reading's first trailer broke viewing records with 365 million views in 24 hours. That's huge, but the real surprise is how the movie lives up to the hype without relying on typical MCU formula. The film takes a unique approach, focusing on a standalone story instead of setting up future MCU plots. It's a bold move that pays off big time. Deadpool and Wolverine stays true to its characters while giving fans something fresh and exciting. This isn't just another superhero movie. It's a game changer for Marvel by blending humor, action, and heart. The film shows there's still room for innovation in the superhero genre. It's not about connecting dots in a bigger universe. It's about telling a great story, and that's why Deadpool and Wolverine matter so much for Marvel's future. Speaking of telling a great story, let's talk about the heart of this movie, Deadpool and Wolverine themselves. Their on-screen chemistry is electric, and it's not just because of the characters. Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman bring these comic book icons to life in a way that's both hilarious and surprisingly touching. From the moment they share the screen, you can feel the tension and the comedy building. Reynolds' Deadpool is just as mouthy and disrespectful as ever, while Jackman's Wolverine is gruff, brooding, and not having any of Wade's nonsense. What could go wrong? It's a perfect recipe for both laughs and conflict. But it's not all jokes and one-liners. The film digs into their shared history, exploring the emotional baggage both characters carry. This adds depth to their relationship, making their interactions more than just quip competitions. As one review puts it, the movie showcases unexpected heart alongside the humor we've come to expect from Deadpool. Now, let's talk about the action. Deadpool and Wolverine don't just trade insults, they actually trade blows too. The fight scenes in this movie are intense and satisfying. There's one sequence that takes place inside a car that's been called one of the best in the film. It's bloody, it's brutal, and it's everything fans have been waiting for. Wolverine's fighting style is more ferocious than ever. The movie doesn't hold back on showing just how dangerous those adamantium claws can be. It's a stark contrast to Deadpool, you like how we said stark? Contrast to Deadpool's more chaotic approach to combat and watching these two styles clash is dope as hell for action fans. Also, there's more than just the fights. The movie uses the Time Variance Authority, which is also known as the TVA, to weave together different timelines and parts of these characters' histories. If you've watched the Loki series, you know all about the TVA already. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. This clever storytelling device allows the film to explore the relationship from different angles, showing how they've changed over time and how they need to put aside their differences and work together. Wolverine, Deadpool working together, yeah, this should just go off lovely, right? Hugh Jackman's return as Wolverine is particularly noteworthy. After the emotional send-off in Logan, many wondered how the character could come back without undermining that powerful ending. But Jackman proves he still has more to offer, delivering what reviews call surprisingly heartfelt moments while maintaining Wolverine's classic intensity. The pairing of Deadpool and Wolverine is described as downright perfect in some reviews, with their personalities playing off of each other brilliantly. Oil and water, those go together, right? Well, the good part for us is when it comes to acting, those personalities can work. So Wolverine is the angry, bitter, pain-raged machine, while Deadpool is the MC with the mouth who will definitely annoy the hell out of Wolverine. It's this dynamic that drives much of the film's comedy and drama. Reynolds and Jackman clearly had a blast making this movie and it shows in their performances. As one review notes, it also allows both Reynolds and Jackman to have a lot of fun in their new surroundings. This enthusiasm translates directly to the screen, making their interactions feel genuine and engaging. Deadpool and Wolverine isn't just about our two title characters. This movie is packed with surprises that'll have Marvel fans pumped up. Let's talk about the cameos, and trust me, there are plenty. This film is like a love letter to Marvel's past, bringing back faces we haven't seen on the big screen in years. Remember Elektra? Jennifer Gardner is back, reprising her role from the early 2000s, and for all you vampire hunters out there, Wesley Snipes makes an appearance as Blade. The best part is, these aren't just quick flashes either. The movie takes time to acknowledge how important these characters were in shaping superhero movies as we know them today. Blade single-handedly saved the Marvel franchise. Debate yourself. <laughs> but here's the best part. These cameos aren't just there to make us point at the screen and say, ah, oh, I know that person. They actually serve a purpose in the story. Deadpool being Deadpool interacts with these characters in a way that are both hilarious and meaningful. It's like he's guiding us through a tour of Marvel's history, cracking jokes and breaking the fourth wall along the way. 
The writers have done an amazing job balancing fan service with actual storytelling. Each cameo feels like it belongs in the movie, adding to the plot instead of distracting us from it. It's not just about throwing in familiar faces, it's about using those faces to enrich the story and remind us why we fell in love with these characters in the first place. One of the most polarizing cameos that comes near the end of the film is Channing Tatum shows up as Gambit. Yes, you heard me right. Channing Tatum shows up as Gambit, the card-throwing, smooth-talking, swaggered-out X-Men who's been trying to get his own movie for years. It's a quick appearance, but it's enough to get fans excited or upset with the possibility of seeing more Gambit in future Marvel films. This is where I'm going to detour from speaking nicely about this movie. I have to get this off my chest. Gambit is my favorite X-Men character, and I need to understand why does he always get the short end of the stick. In X-Men 97, which is a show I love, why does Gambit wear crop tops, lose Rogue to Magneto, and get killed off after being the suave badass that he is? If you understand it, please explain it to me because I'm highly upset with this. Oh, then to top it off, I see my guy Gambit pop out and show people in Deadpool Wolverine, and he's being played by Channing Tatum of all people. Mr. Magic Mike, Mr. Step It Up, like come on. He doesn't even have the same face or look as Gambit and then to put the powdered sugar on the beignet, his New Orleans accent is absolutely atrocious. Channing needs to go spend a year in New Orleans and practice what a real Cajun's voice sounds like because that was a disgrace. Even Deadpool called it out in the movie saying it sounded like he learned how to talk from the minions and I absolutely have to agree. I'm hopeful that Marvel was messing with us fans with the casting of Gambit. They have to be, right? Gambit should have had his own movie by now, and if I have to make my own fan film and show them the real Gambit, I will. Okay, back to Deadpool and Wolverine. This movie even pays tribute to the entire Fox era of Marvel films with the montage at the end. Set to a nostalgic soundtrack, we get to see outtakes and behind the scenes footage from the years of X-Men movies. It's a touching way to close out this chapter of Marvel history and move into the future. What's really impressive is how the film uses these cameos to comment on the idea of the multiverse. With the Time Variance Authority, TVA, involved, Deadpool and Wolverine hop through different timelines and realities. This gives us a chance to see alternate versions of characters we know and love, adding another layer of fun to the cameo fest. In the end, Deadpool and Wolverine manages to celebrate Marvel's past while still pushing the franchise forward. It's not just about who shows up, it's about how those appearances make us feel and what they mean for the characters we've been following for years. The cameos in this movie aren't just fan service, they're a reminder of how far superhero movies have come and how much further they can go. Speaking of innovation, let's talk about one of Deadpool's signature moves breaking the fourth wall. In Deadpool and Wolverine, this isn't just a gimmick, it's a key part of the story. The movie takes meta humor to a whole new level, poking fun at everything from Disney's acquisition of Fox to the ups and downs of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. From the moment Deadpool steps on screen singing bye 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 doing his in-sync dances and you know being the crazy assassin that he is, he's cracking jokes about being part of the Disney family now, but it's not just about making us laugh. These meta moments actually help the movie fit into the larger MCU without losing what makes Deadpool special, while still being the same old mother effer Merc with the mouth we know and love. The film uses the TVA to connect Deadpool to the MCU. This clever move lets the movie stand on its own without requiring viewers to have seen every Marvel film out there. As director Sean Levy puts it, this movie is built for entertainment with no obligation to come prepared with prior research. It's a smart way to welcome new fans while still giving longtime Marvel watchers plenty to enjoy. But don't think this means Deadpool and Wolverine is going soft. The movie keeps its R rating, which means the crude humor and violence are still very much present. Deadpool takes full advantage of this, making jokes that definitely wouldn't fly in a typical Disney movie. It's this balance of edgy comedy and heartfelt moments that make this film work so well. The multiverse concept plays a big role too. By hopping through different timelines and realities, Deadpool and Wolverine get to explore their own histories and the wider Marvel Universe in fun, unexpected ways that lets the movie dive into deeper themes about identity and purpose. What's really impressive is how the film manages to be self-aware without becoming cynical, but there's genuine love for these characters and their world shining through. The action sequences play a big part in making the meta humor work, 
They're visually stunning and packed with energy, which helps ground all the fourth wall breaking in something tangible. When Deadpool is cracking wise in the middle of a fight scene, it feels natural and adds to the excitement rather than taking you out of the moment. In the end, Deadpool and Wolverine shows that there's still plenty of life left in superhero movies by embracing its quirky sense of humor and meta-narrative while still delivering on action and emotion. It carves out a unique space in the Marvel Universe. It's proof that you could be part of a bigger franchise without losing your identity and have a lot of fun doing it. Can we take Marvel off the emergency room operating table now? With the Russo brothers back to deliver the next two Avengers movies and RDJ, Robert Downey Jr. becoming Dr. Doom in the future Marvel films, let me know in the comments below. So why exactly is Deadpool and Wolverine such a big deal for Marvel's future? Well, it's not just about the laughs and action. This movie is redefining what superhero cinema can be. By focusing on telling a great standalone story instead of setting up a dozen sequels, it shows there's still plenty of life left in the genre. Deadpool and Wolverine isn't just another superhero flick, it's blazing a new trail for Marvel's next era of storytelling. Thanks Splashers for watching, like, comment, subscribe, check out some of my other reviews if you haven't already, and catch you on the next one.